Hi, welcome on Things to Consider. I have in my hand something called a Vortex Panel Cooler. How it works is compressor goes into the unit and it uh, splits the air up into a hot and cold stream. The cold stream goes into the control panel and cools it like a regular air conditioner, except that it's essentially maintenance free, utilizes no electricity, and uses only compressed air. Uh, it's used typically in very, very dirty environments uh, because it helps keep out the, uh, the surrounding atmosphere and also uh, reduces maintenance, uh, which can be very high in those kinds of environments. So, things to consider when installing these Vortex style coolers. Number one, you want to have it at or near the top of the panel. The reason is, hot air rises, cold air falls. Panel coolers have a vent that's built in to allow the hot air that's being displaced to leave the panel. So you would want to have it at the top, or if it can't be mounted at the top, utilizing a side mount, it can be mounted near the top on the side, still allowing for the hot air to come out. So you want it at or near the top. Secondly, you want it mounted vertical. You do not want to mount it sideways. You don't want to mount it upside down. Again, for the very reason, you want to have that vent to be able to push that hot air out. Mounting it sideways, it's not going to work as well, certainly not very well upside down. So you want to mount it vertical or at least near vertical. Third, you want to install it on the control panel. We actually had a customer one time install the panel cooler outside the panel and have a hose leading into the panel. This causes a lot of cooling effect loss as it goes through the panel, thereby rendering it pretty much not very effective. So you want to actually mount it onto the panel. Four, distribute the cold air on the inside. If the panel is very, very small, It'll isothermalize or equalize in temperature fairly fast, but most panels are fairly tall. They're about five to six feet tall and a couple of feet wide. So you want to have a hose distribution kit to distribute that cold air with holes in that hose blowing that cold air on the hot spots inside the panel. It'll help cool a lot faster uh, and cool the, the spots that need to be cooled quickly much faster than allowing it to slowly over time isothermalize. So distribute the cold air utilizing the hose. The other nice thing about the hose is should your filtration ever fail and some dirt or something gets inside the panel, that hose will also trap any of that dirt or possible moisture, although that's very remote, in, inside the hose and not cause any damage inside the panel. Five, always filter the compressed air. Always filter the compressed air. For sure you have a, want to have a water removal filter. Now, what's nice about that, as long as you have a water removal filter, you remove that water, you will stop any moisture from ever getting inside that control panel. That's because even if it's saturated compressed air, once that air goes into the panel cooler, it's going to start going back to atmospheric pressure. The relative humidity of that compressed air goes down significantly. In fact, the maximum you could ever get is maximum 40% relative humidity inside that panel. It will be dry. If you have oil or possible other dirt in the line, you want to have a uh, oil removal filter installed as well. You want to stop that particulate so it doesn't end up plugging up the panel cooler. And again, if anything does get inside by mistake, the hose kit that's used will trap any of that material. And finally, check the supply line size. If your supply line is too small, you're going to have a lot of pressure drop. And you want to have at least about 80 pounds or 5.5 bar at that panel cooler to make it work optimally. It's like driving a car. If you drive a car too slow, you're burning more gas per mileage that you're driving. So it's kind of designed to operate optimally between 80 to 100 pounds pressure or between 5.5 and about 6.2 bar. So make sure that your line size is not so small that you're choking the air supply, causing a large pressure drop. Those are all the things to consider in installing Vortex coolers.